Extend that front end out. We get that motor set back here. Put a Model T grill shell out front. Slap dually rear end. Six tires out each side, call it a rat rod. Got this heavy SOB pulled up here. I think it kind of sucks pulling through grass uphill. Ugh. Uh, I think Stevie Wonder can see what's going on here. We're gonna put the front of this frame on the front of this travel wall. I think the first thing I wanna do is clean up some of the stuff off this. These old brake lines that used to run to the rear. I'm actually gonna save the front ones because we may be able to tie into them or get them to actually reach the master cylinder or proportioning valve, I mean. Uh, so we may not have to rebend those. So we'll keep them. But some of this other crap, we just wanna get it cleaned up, get this crap off here. And like the previous video where we tore this thing down, I've got enough measurements where when I cut this, I left a few inches here where it's probably gonna end up needing to be cut at. I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. I'm gonna do some measuring here. Uh, leave a couple inches where we can get this thing actually slid up closer to start uh, making it fit better. So we will be cutting this down as, uh, even though I'm sure a couple of y'all really like that rat rod idea. Not in this shop. So I know I said I was gonna rough cut it down, but I'm actually gonna get it pretty close. So let me show y'all what measurements I got here. Inside the frame rail, 33 and three quarter. So what I did was this frame tapers out. I came over here and measured across this frame until I found where it was 33 and three quarter wide. Um, I did it first with some rough, uh, rough marks, just kind of holding it across there. And once I felt like I was pretty close, I put a mark and then I measured back off the AR mount on each side a couple times until we have two matching marks on each side and uh, measuring across there is the 33 and three quarter. So that's where the width of it is gonna be the same as the inside of this frame. Now with that, I wanted to know from that point forward to the center of our uh, wheel what that distance was. So I had to get a little creative, but basically I took a piece of angle iron, put it across here where it's sticking out, got it matched up on both marks. Took my roller, got it in a way, my ruler, my level, got it in a way, kind of like so, where then I could measure from there up to the center. Of course, I had to clamp this stuff. I'm just kind of trying to show you all how I did it. Use little clamps, got all that stuff clamped up. I was able to measure it. And let me see, so I don't lie to you. It's 12 and 3 16 from there to the center. So before we took this apart, I knew that from my reference point back here to the center is 31 and a 16th. So with all that information, if we plan on cutting the frame here, we can use that and figure out how much we need to cut this frame down and all that. So all that basically looks like this. Our frame, three and three quarter wide, inside to inside. Um, over here, this would be looking down, front AR mounts. The frame tapers out, tapers out. 
the point where that line intersects, 33 and three quarter inch wide. If you could measure from there up to the center, 12 and 3 sixteenths. Now we have reference point on our body to where it needs to be forward or forward, where it needs to be up in the center of the wheel. That's 31 and 16th. So we can subtract that from that overall distance and we get 18 and 7 eighths. So that's how far we need to come up from a reference point to the frame, find that point and cut that frame there. And then that distance plus our 12 and 13 sixteenths we're gonna have from this one will get us back to our uh, 31 and a sixteenth. I hope that makes sense. I look pretty sweet cruising that thing. So this took getting a little creative. So I didn't really record it, but I'm gonna explain what's going on here. Um, so the first thing I wanna do right up against this body mount is where I have an area marked. That's our reference from going from there uh, forward to the center. So when you get forward to there, 18 and uh, seven eighths, which I did mark down here, but this is right on the edge of it, so you can't see it. But this distance here to here is 18 and seven eighths. Um, now I clamped this on here just with these clamps and this happened to sit on here just right where we're nice and level and we're doing everything based off level so we just got lucky with that that it happens to fit so the next thing i did was take our tape come off the frame back here it's right at eight inches go up here right at eight inches and if you can get real precise and push that out there just to hit your string it's right at eight inches so we know our levels running parallel with our frame rail there so next thing do take my angle finder here set it at 90 degrees clamp it to there where it's going out past take the plumb bob drop it down just till it touches and that line right there would be will be the 18 and 7 eighths in reference to over here uh so actually as it turns out i did not cut as much extra material as i thought it's kind of close actually so may have got a little lucky there of course i didn't realize we we're gonna have to cut so far up on this for it tapering but we're still good to go here i'm gonna mark this cut it and We'll use some reference measurements off this frame to be able to do the other side. We don't have to do all this craziness, uh, but I'm gonna get that done now. Next, I'm going to take flap wheel, flapper, and grind these little brackets off here. They're inside and, uh, sorry, they're on the inside and outside of the frame. And then I kind of drew out where I want to cut this thing. I'm going to pie cut it, 
kind of get it pushed over. Like I said, try to get this the same width as the framework and slide in there. So let's get going on that. I got all this narrowed in, a couple tacks on it, cleaned up the frame a little bit. So our Silverado frame is taller than our international frame. It is, overall it's six inches tall, so probably about five and three quarter. Well, I need to get my line back on here with a plumb bob, but if you put your line going down there, we're gonna come from the top of the frame. We're gonna make the top of the frame match the top of this one because the motor is already gonna end up sitting real high. I did some measurements over there and it's already gonna have the motor sitting pretty high in the engine bay. So we don't wanna match the bottoms and take the, take this up anymore. Um, so we're gonna get this line on here. Then from right there, we're gonna get a good measurement of this distance. If it's a five and three quarter, I'm gonna drop down the five and three quarter. I'll use angle finder, match the angle in here. We're gonna cut this roughly, something like that, where it'll fit in there, if that makes sense. to get some rough measurements and we want to get a measure off this up to our center line of our wheel to see if we're close to that 31 and a 16th if those numbers are close we need to slide this back out i'll weld up up here where we slotted this we'll smooth it out and then on the frame rails here looks like i could probably drill a few holes for some plug welds out here uh, this is all going to end up getting boxed anyways, but we're still going to make it as strong as we can like this before we box it. So. so I just realized I made a mistake this morning, and that was I have a point over here off the body mount from the frame I was using as a measurement, and one off the body. The one off the body is where we should have 30 and a 16th. And I realized this morning when I set all that up, I did not come off this one. I came off this one up here. So the math has been wrong the whole time. Uh, this mount kind of tapers back, so we can't just run a straight edge. But I got my ruler up here a minute ago. Uh, got it out straight. Measured the distance from the straight edge of it to that and then to that. And the difference is... An inch and a half that's the best I could tell so I just measured from here to the center actually so if we have this thing I 
So the travel all has ass weapons. Buy one, get one free today, and I bought a couple. All right, so I'm editing this video, and I just realized why I ended up chasing my tail for a while that day. And it is at the beginning of the video, you'll notice I say 31 and a 16th. And then in that last clip, I say 30 and a 16th. Um, I don't know why I flip-flopped those numbers in my head, but I did. The number was 30 and a 16th. That's the number I had wrote down on my little reference sheet. I didn't look at it that day. I went off memory, and for some reason, I added that extra inch to it. I don't know why. So between using the wrong reference over there and that body being back an inch and a half and then doing our measurements and adding an additional inch, we were off two and a half inches. Well, in that previous clip, you see I go to do the measurement and I think I'm gonna be an inch and a half off and my measurement was about 32 and a half inches. Well, we're trying to get to 30 and a 16th. So, there's an extra inch there that I didn't realize where it came from, how it could have happened, until I just seen the video repeating the numbers back, and it was a kind of aha moment. So I'll tell you guys what I ended up doing after that. Um, I knew I was safe to cut off the inch and a half, so I cut the inch and a half off the travel all frame. I took everything back again. We're still about an inch off. I didn't know why at the time. And I was kind of getting frustrated because I'd already cut off more than I thought I was going to have to. I was still off. I was kind of getting upset with myself and I'm trying to get measurements and the spindle's flopping around because it's not on a rack or nothing. It's not a fixed position. So then at that point I decided to throw some washers on here, lug nuts, and I clamped down the rotors. I took about a two foot piece of square tubing and I seat clamped it to this rotor. We're extended out straight. I did that on both sides. I took another piece of square tubing, went across them, and I squared it up, and I tacked that up. That way, um, these rotors on each side were held in a jig at 90, running parallel with the chassis, and we would have a consistent measurement every time because I think it was moving some, throwing me off. And when you're trying to get really close and you keep throwing yourself off a 16th or an eighth there, it was, it was driving me crazy. I was, uh, I was getting pretty frustrated. So after I got those clamped up, um, I finally got squared up in the frame enough where I was confident. I had a matching wheelbase actually, though the wheelbase was still an inch too long and I wasn't sure why. Then I trimmed the frame again until I got the wheelbase where it needed to be. And I was able to um, get everything within an eighth inch on my cross measurements. So I, was, I knew I was finally where I needed to be though I didn't know why I made mistakes getting there at the time. So once I had all that, the last thing I needed to check was the angle of this front frame and with the jack underneath the cross member up here, picking it up all the way till it was putting weight like it was wanting to pick up the travel all. Um, I put my angle finder on this reference point right here because this is what I used when this thing was still on the little cart and the bottom of the frame was level and this was at like 10 degrees. Um, of course, our travel off frames level. I put it on here, it's at 10 degrees. So I knew everything was matching the way it should and that this had the same geometry as when it was on the other truck. So at that point, I knew everything was good to go. Finally, thank goodness. I did cut down more of the frame, got it slid back. I got the 30 and a 16th that I wanted to see there. Um, got it matching on both sides. Got the wheelbase matching dead on. After the wheelbase was matching, I kept going off the of reference to the body, mainly using our bolts over here for the door hinges to different holes and points of the suspension I could get to until basically it was off the eighth inch. And what I did was put a tack on this side. I ended up tapping that side up just a hair. So now the wheelbase on that side is off the 16th, but cross measuring, everything's dead on. So when you're messing with old vehicles like this, you know, there, there's a lot that's off. So the fact we're getting cross measurements to all of our suspension dead on and our wheelbase on each side's within a 16th, I'm happy with that. That's pretty good. Um, I will tell you, if you use one of these front frames, 
Press your tape measure and not try to look at it because this crap looks crooked. The way the frame's built, it's just, it's an optical illusion, so you definitely don't want to trust your eye. Trust your tape measure, of course. Uh, but I got everything where I wanted it. I got some tacks on here to make sure nothing, nothing moves. Tacked on both sides, both sides. I need to get in, get in there, throw a couple more tacks on it on the inside. I'm gonna check it with the tape one more time just to be safe. And then if it's good, I'm gonna burn that baby in. So maybe we can end the day on a good note here. Cross member up here was level. Only good real reference point on it. So what I did was back here on this frame, I have my level down here again. I shimmed up one side with the angle finder on it till it read level and then off of it I, was, I measured from the top of the level up to the top of the AR mount and it was within or it wasn't within nothing it was dead on so I know side to side were good too. You want to check that um, before you start tacking anything up. Uncle Rick and Brock told me one time I must really uh, trust my tape measure because I don't ever tack stuff in. I always full weld it. I'm not going to change that today. Hell yeah, we just finished our LS motor mounts, clearance in our frame for our AC compressor, for our vintage air, our rack and pinion kit, our sway bar kit, our disc brake kit. That's all stuff you'd have to do to classic cars, old cars, when you're upgrading them. Um, we just did it all at once. I did a rough measurement already and came up with I think 35 inches is what I came up with, which put us cutting it right at this clip. And if you look right underneath there, our high performance sway bar kit we just installed there. So I'm gonna get underneath here, come forward to the mount of that, and we're gonna square it off from that. Lop the front of this off. There'll be plenty of clearance where we can get this front end carried over here and maybe mock back up. How's it drive? Uh, How's she drive? Like a Porsche. Like a Porsche. <laughs> well, that's it for today. If you're new to the channel, please check out some other videos. Stick around. Um, for everyone who always comes back, I want to say thank you again. The channel's slowly growing, and it's because of you guys, so thank you. Um, if you want to help me out and help the channel, it's really as simple as dropping a comment down below, liking the video, sharing the video, subscribing. Um, I'm on Instagram at Puddin's Fab Shop. If y'all want to catch me on there, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget, sitting on your ass won't finish your project. I'll see you guys next time.